we actually have all of this stuff in a really convenient object. And we're going to pair this together. So we're going to go ahead and create a, another file, uh, of, yeah, in source. And we're going to call this one Axios. So lowercase a, axios.js. Okay. So now what we'll do is in Axios, what we're going to do is, so every single request that I want to send is going to have the same beginning of like the, the same starting URL, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've got a little snippet of code here. I'm just going to paste it here and we're going to explain what this does. So the top, what we did is we're importing Axios and basically that's just using the package manager, the package or the module that we installed earlier, which is essentially going to do what Postman does, right? And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance. So we have Axios gives us this very nice method called create. And all you do is you pass it a base URL, right? So this basically means every single time I was to do something like uh, instant, so instance.get, then for example, this would be sending a get request. So if I was to write, for example, foobar, mm -hmm. then the URL that we're actually going to be sending to is going to be this. So it's going to actually look something like this. I see. Does that so make sense? Yeah. So basically it's just taking this thing and then it's appending it to that. Yeah. And it's a very cool. simple sort of, it's a very good pattern to use whenever you're doing a lot of sort of uh, requests from your app. So with that said, what we're doing is we're exporting this. Um, and then we pretty much have the bones for sort of starting to make requests, right? So everything sort of is looking good right now. Um, so now we need this, so a snippet of code which runs based on a specific conditional variable. Uh, and React luckily gives us a really nice uh, hook. So it's called use effects. We have to import it. And basically what we do is we write use effect. And inside of here, we basically do the, we have two things. We have the first argument, which is just in a function here. And then the second thing is these brackets. So these square brackets. And basically, so I'm going to explain what this does now. So, awesome. and what we can do is in this bracket here, if we leave this blank, we're basically saying run once. So if, if we leave the brackets blank, then we're saying run once when the row loads and don't run it again, right? So yeah. that's what we say if we leave it blank. Uh, if you were to pass in a variable here, so for example, if I passed in movies, it's gonna run once when the uh, row loads and then it's gonna run every single time movies changes. So we call that a dependency. So it's dependent on if movies changes yeah. Uh, as to whether or not it needs exactly. to refile. So, so anytime this variable movie changes, this snippet of code is going to run. But if you remove that sunny movies from here, and it's an empty bracket, yeah. yeah, so basically this code is only going to run once because of this, only on page load, and that's it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that should help everyone understand sort of what use effect does. Um, so let's actually start coding in here. So what we need to do is I'm going to pull in uh, remember, we created that little Axios helper. So I'm going to actually use that here. So I'm going to say import. And I'm going to say Axios from. But I'm not going to do the typical thing of pulling it from Axios, the, depend the dependency. I'm going to go ahead over to our file where we created um, our little helper. Because this one, remember, if um, we actually. Um, so if I go over to that file. This so I can right see here. It, so. Yeah, this one right here. So remember, we, we called it const, uh, instance here, but because we export it as a default, when we bring it in, it doesn't actually matter what name we use, which is why over here, when I actually import it, I can call it whatever I want. Uh, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to use it. So I'm basically going to say, um, what I need to do now is I actually need to run a bit of asynchronous work. So I need to, I need to basically make an asynchronous call. Because I'm sending a request outside to a third party service. Remember guys, it's gonna take, it'll be really quick, but it's gonna fill, it's gonna maybe even take a second or half a second, but we call that async. So in order to run an async function inside of this little use effect, cause you can't actually use uh, async things inside of a use effect, you have to do it in a special way. You do this, you say async function and you say fetch data. So you write a little internal function, right? So inside of here, we're gonna actually do all the fetching. And then afterwards, you just call it. You just say fetch data. That's how you do it inside of an a uh, use effect. So it's a bit of a strange one, 
Mm -hmm. But you actually need to do it like that whenever you have an async, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to say const request. So we need to make a request. And the way we're going to do it is we say await. So await is going to say when you make this request, wait for the promise to come back. So wait for the answer to come back. So if it goes off to a server, even if it takes five seconds, wait for it to come back and then do something. Um, so we say axios.get. And then here, I'm going to use that fetch URL that we talked about earlier. So imagine what it's doing here is it's going here and it's starting, you get this beginning URL. So imagine like this is what we're doing. So we get that beginning URL and then we pass in a URL here. So for example, we passed in the fetch Netflix URL, which if we go to this one is this. So I'm just going to grab this and show you what we're doing. And then here, this is actually just going to, because we're using the Axios that we set up earlier, it's basically doing this. So this is the URL it's sending a request to now, mm. but it will replace the API key with, with our API key. Nice. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So you see, it's a very, very nice slick implementation. Um, and that, but it looks very clean as well. Like we don't have to write much code to get that working. And now what we're going to do is we basically, so what I like to do at this point is do console.log request. Right, so console log request. And and the reason why I do that is because I like to see what the data structure is that we get back. Because remember, we don't actually know what that, so I need to just do a little something like here to uh, return request so that it doesn't freak out. But here, console log request is needed so that we can actually see the data structure that we're getting back. So I'm gonna save this now. And what I want you to do is if you full screen uh, the browser, so let's go ahead and full screen the browser and let's just open the inspector, but let's go to our app. So the, the, the local host version. Yeah, so let's open up the inspector. And now on the right, so if you go also a console, if you open up the console, yeah, we can see, see there's an object, right? Yeah. See it says object. If you click that, you see this is what's coming back from that request. So there's two objects because there's two rows and each one has a different thing. So now this is how you actually inspect what comes back. So we're not interested in the config, we're interested in the data. And in specific, uh, we're looking at data.results. So that's how we sort of find what the structure is, right? This one. So right whenever over you here. make a, Yeah. So whenever you make any sort of API request, a thing that people usually get stuck on is like, how do I know what's coming back? And a good way of testing that is console log it and then see what you're getting back. So now we know that the stuff that we're interested in is inside of data.results. So now what we do is, um, so we found out the data structure and we saw that it was request.data.results, right? Yeah. So that's the one, request.data.results. So I'm just gonna add that here so we have a note. We're going to go ahead and set that inside the movies. So I'm obviously going to get the request dot data dot results, which was an, it's an array. And I'm going to go ahead and pop that inside of our movies. All right. Yeah. So what we need to do, there's one more step now. So whenever you use anything inside of a user effect, if there is any variable that is being you that is being pulled in from outside, but it's used inside of the user effect, you have to have to have to have to include it inside of here. The reason being is because it's dependent on that variable. So it's now a dependency. So every time this changes, we have to update our user effects. Uh -huh. So that way it <laughs> That is one of the things that I was actually getting really stuck in when I was building my own app with React and I had to yeah. use an asynchronous function. And so I just could not figure out how to get it to load, but this is, this is pretty sick, okay. Because if you don't include that, what happens is, is say I passed in a different fetch URL, it wouldn't re-render the user effect, mm -hmm. or it wouldn't recalculate the user effect. So you would have a, a you would you would get a different answer to what you expected, and that's why a lot of people run into an issue, and then, and then it gets very confusing when you're also combining that with async and and all yeah. of that stuff. So that's a very just a neat way of thinking about it. Now the way what, what I like to do just to get a little sanity check is I console log the movies to see if, if anything's actually working or pulling through as we expect. Mm -hmm. So if we go ahead and inspect the, um, the, the uh, screen that we should be able to see now, you can see that we get an array and that's got a bunch of movies inside of it. Oh, nice. So now that's all we're just getting here instead yep. of so everything we're getting all else. The come through. Yeah. Beautiful.